Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are going to continue to share some of the past devotionals from the archive this week. Wanted to select one today that was relative to yesterday's sermon on faith. This video was shot uh, as I traveled throughout different areas in Tallahassee to breathe new life into our devotion and hopefully give you an opportunity to visit with me some of the places that are available for our private sanctuary, our place where you can get away, our prayer closet. I really want to get back to getting out and away from this setting, but my schedule has been much more challenging, especially since launching the church earlier this year. But this is a look back to last year, about this time, as I was traveling throughout Tallahassee each day and bringing the devotional in a fresh new way. I hope you enjoy it. See you back here tomorrow, and we'll discover some of these other places that God desires to, to bring our attention to. All right, good morning, Connections. This could require much more coordination than I am capable of, but I will do my very best. As you, I think I already informed, but we are at the park on Lake Bradford. I wish I had grabbed the name of it before I hiked halfway around the lake, but it's the, the lake that, that Stu was talking about on, on our Sunday commute to church. And it is by not my recollection, but now what I've learned, it is north of Famu Way on Lake Bradford, so north of the railroad bridge even. So it's snuggled up pretty close in to uh, all the action there at FSU and the stadium and where I was talking about the motor car coaches parking. So um, it is definitely more of an urban park than what we've been visiting, a little less well-trafficked, meaning a lot more <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot less traffic than, say, Lake Ella or, uh, or Cascades, which will be a couple of places we visit in the future as well, I'm sure. But uh, as far as, as having a, a little bit of nature right here in the, the middle of, of the city and uh, having... <laughs> I've got a spy coming up behind me. I don't have anything for you. As far as being the closest to uh, access for all of us that are uh, Tallahassians, this would be it. So we'll check out Cascades and, and Lake Ella. Those are, are probably a little bit more well known. There's Myers Park as well um, along Appalachian Parkway. So plenty of other uh, city parks to, to enjoy. And I hope this wind will not interrupt our hear me. So um, I don't have a picnic table, as you might be able to tell. I'm nestled up against this tree. So let's get started with today's lesson. We are talking about um, people's inability to hear, people's inability to respond, and God's role in that, that, that we have to trust that when people are ready to hear, and when he is ready for them to hear, that they will. We can look at our own situations and recognize there was a, a time in our life perhaps when we didn't have an ear for God at all. And then through circumstance and through God's grace, something new occurred. And all of a sudden, it's as if our eyes were open for the very first time. And that's certainly what we look for each and every Sunday, each and every time we get an opportunity to interact with one another. But it's something that that certainly the, the disciples were aware of as well as they followed Jesus and Jesus spoke a lot in parables and they didn't really understand why. Why not make yourself more clear? So that's the kind of drilling a little bit deeper, going a little bit deeper into this, the right timing, the right ears to hear the message at the at, at 
at the appointed time when when God wills it. So we're going to be in Matthew 13, and we're going to start in 33. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in, three measures of flour, it per permeated every part of the dough. That kind of speaks to what we were you know, referencing on, on Sunday of even our smallest efforts turn into to much larger blessings when when we begin to move towards God, when we make an effort to submit to his will. A little bit of faith goes a long way. So that's what Jesus is talking about in that parable, but why didn't he just say a little bit of faith goes a long way? <laughs> Jesus always used stories as illustrations, this continues in 34, like these when speaking to crowds. In fact, he never spoke to them without using such parables. This fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet. I will speak to you in parables. I will explain things hidden since the creation of the world. So that began speaking to, Jesus can speak to a crowd full of people and those that have ears to hear can hear. And those that do not have the ability to hear, that knowledge is kept from them. And again, as we referenced yesterday, that requires us to trust God, that, that the ears that are intended to hear will hear. And if we go by the parable that Jesus is, is, is referencing or, or speaking uh, just prior to this, we have hope that our faith will will bring others into relationship with God, that that yeast that we share will spread throughout the dough. This prophecy is, is referenced not in Isaiah, where we've spent most of the time. This prophecy is referenced in Psalm 78, verse 2. And it says, For I will speak in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generations about the glorious deeds of the Lord and about his power and his mighty wonders. What I enjoy about that is if you consider the original audience and Jesus referencing and talking about yeast and when he's supposed to be talking about the salvation of the world, the original audience would have had no clue at all. But you and I, we have had these parables handed down to us from generation to generation. So we have the advantage of, of having a better understanding that the original audience wasn't able to, to grasp. So aren't we fortunate that now that Jesus has been revealed and his word accessible to all that we, with a little bit of study and certainly God's grace, we can have the understanding that Jesus was looking for those in the original audience to have ears to hear. So finally in Matthew 13, we're kind of backtracking to verse 10. Jesus says this, his disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He said, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. Which underlines and continues to reference what we spoke of yesterday and what we've been studying for, since the beginning of the week and even from Sunday, which is trusting God that in the time, in the proper time, the proper place, those that, that can hear and see will be given the opportunity to respond just as you and I were given the opportunity to respond. But there are always going to be those within the crowd, within those that, that we are speaking to, that just lack the ability. And those who we... That's who I desire for us to pray for this week. 
that God's grace and God's mercy would overcome the ignorance and that their eyes would be open and their ears could hear. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have provided us. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to, to pursue us. What a privilege it is to be in your family. What a privilege it is to be able to hear and understand your word. But our thoughts and our prayers go to those that have not been able to hear and have not been able to respond, Lord. In these last days, as you seek to draw all of the, the world to you, we ask, Lord, for your favor. We ask, Lord, that you would, would have a breakthrough, a breakthrough as soon as today, a breakthrough as soon as, as, as possible, Lord. There are so many that are lost and so many that are hungry for change and so many that are seeking answers. We pray today, Lord, that this would be the day that they might hear and understand. We trust in your will. We trust in your plan. We trust in your, that you are sovereign, Lord. And we also understand how much you love us. Give us the courage and the strength to finish well, Lord. Give us the, the strength to continue to, to speak even though we don't see a response. We desire to glorify you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, look at that coordination. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again, please. Be good.